first, let's navigate to page one of our document. You can check down here in the lower left-hand corner and make sure you're really on page one. You can look at your page number. Go to your type tool, and you won't be able to click on any of these boxes. They won't come alive. You have to unlock them because they are master page items. You do that by holding down your command and your shift key and clicking on the frame that you wish to unlock. Just click on the top one here, the middle one, and these two, and leave the rest locked as master page items. Uh, the reason for that is that once you have unlocked a box from the master page, that the master page no longer controls it, and um, that's kind of important to understand. For our first typeface, I'd like to suggest that we do Adobe Garamond Pro. And here we have to review a few terms and so that we're all kind of speaking the same language. A typeface is oops, Adobe Garamond Pro. And I always encourage you to work with open type fonts and open type pro fonts wherever you can because they are really the professional standard now. So we'll just type that in so we'll know that this is an open type font, and that can become important later when you want to export to formats such as EPUB because open type embeds in EPUB, but say for example type 1 fonts will not. So it's quite important to know what your format is. Now I did my master page in Adobe Garamond Pro regular. If you chose another font, what we need to do now is to select that and right up here we can change that and choose uh, Garmon Pro Regular if you have it. If not, you'll have to choose something else. Uh, and let's see what, let's look under the hood and look in our glyphs panel and see what Adobe Garamon Pro has available to us because it's much, much more than just this basic character set that is sitting before us right now. Now there's another method uh, besides the glyphs panel to see if you have an alternate character if you have the latest version of InDesign 2015. And this, this feature just came out in November of 2015. So if you're using an older feature, you'll have to use the Glyphs panel. Uh, but if you have the current feature, you can select a character and a little set of frames will come up that show you whether you have an alternate character. And I see right here that I have small caps available, which is very, very cool. So I definitely want to put those on here. And I'm just going to quickly type something down here in the bottom because I have some extra space. And going to my open type menu here, I can change that to all small capitals, uh, which is great. And um, I can finish out this alphabet sentence a little bit later, but I wanted to remember that I have small capitals. Uh, also, if I go to my numbers here, I can see that, oh, there's an ornament there. That's interesting. I have various alternate numbers, and I can see that this is going to be an old style figure. You can see that uh, it's got different kinds of figures. So now that I know I have an old style figures here, I'm going to copy this paste it there, select this, and rather than selecting them one by one, I can go up here to my open type menu and just choose proportional old style. Now I have my old style figures. This is great. What if I want to see how many ligatures I have? I could just put my cursor here, and now I think the glyphs panel is going to be my best bet. So I'll go to glyphs and choose ligatures, standard ligatures, oh, and I can see I've got a very nice collection of ligatures here. Uh, some that are a little bit more than the standard, so I might want to make a record of that, that I have extra ligatures that I can work with. Um, likewise, we already saw how I could find my fractions uh, by just going to numbers here, and I have a very good collection of fractions, so that's cool. Now I noticed earlier when I was in the glyphs panel that there seemed to be an A with a little bit of a flourish on it. So if I type an A here, that'll come up and I can just put it right in there. 
And there were also some ornaments, and I'd, I'd like to put those in here so that I remember that I have them. And probably the glyphs panel is the best place to find those. So you can kind of switch back and forth here. Where are my ornaments? I can just double click on these, put them in there. Um, I think that I recall that InDesign also, uh, that Garamond rather, also has some discretionary ligatures, and these are kind of historic forms that we don't use that much anymore. But oh, yeah, it's just got one, a CT. That's kind of handy. Um, it looks a little anachronistic, but it might come in handy for logo design. For example, there's an ST ligature like this in some typefaces, and that's used in the Pinterest logo. So somebody who designed the Pinterest logo knew about that feature. We can finish this page up very quickly because we want to also make sure that our type samples are in Garamond Pro Regular. And once again, make sure it's in Garamond Pro Regular and then we're done with this page. Now I want to do a page for Garamond Pro Italic and probably an easier way for me to do that is to copy what I've done here rather than start from scratch since everything's already in Garamond and the, a lot of the character issues are going to be similar. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to insert a page after page one and I'm going to let it be based on A master. That's good. And command click to unlock my four boxes. Now I'm just going to cut and paste between the two pages and make some corrections. So let's select the contents of the first box, copy, go to my new page, paste. Command A selects everything, Command C copies, page 2, Command A, Command V, likewise, Command A, paste, or Command V on um, a Mac, go back to our first page, then select everything, Command C, and Command V. So now this page is basically ready to be converted to italic and you'll kind of see why we did it this way because it's going to be faster. All of this information is the same. I just need to change regular to italic. Now I can just select all here and go up here and just change these three frames to italic. It's very, very quick to do because it's already in Garamond Pro. Um, and you can see that the ornaments have remained the same. And the ligatures are the same because it's all Garamond Pro. It's all the same typeface. But italic has, oh, but look down here. No small capitals in italic. Huh. Wow, I didn't see that coming, so let's uh, just delete that. And when you do this kind of cutting and pasting, you've got to you've got to look at it because there might be some things like that that surprise you. Now my ornaments are the same, my old style figures I think will be good, uh, but there's something because this is italic, and I know from experience that italic open type pro fonts sometimes have swash capitals, which is decorative capitals. And if I select here and I see that, I go, oh my goodness, there it is. So I know that I have swash capitals. And boy, oh boy, do I want to show myself in the future that I've got those to work with because they are really a lot of fun. I'll check. Select this. Edit. Copy. Right down here. Edit. So rather than having to select and get each one of these individually, which would be too time consuming, I can just select it, go up here to my control panel, choose open type, and notice swash is enabled. Uh, 
when you go to these open type menus, anything that has brackets around it just doesn't, isn't enabled for this particular typeface. And if it's there, if it's live, then you can use it. So select those, and wow, I see all, I have all these fancy script capitals. Now, I should mention that when you use these, they're normally just used as initials. Uh, you wouldn't normally string them together like that because it kind of looks like a lot of spaghetti. What remains now is to go to your remaining pages and choose typefaces and just repeat the whole process. If we take a look at our finished document here, you'll see that our next step is to be to creating an interactive table of contents. Uh, just looking at some of what I discovered when I worked on this, you can see there's my Garamond Pro Italic and I did Caslon Pro Regular and Caslon Pro Italic. These are some of my favorite serif typefaces. Uh, but there are a lot of other great classic typefaces for you to explore. And you'll see that some typefaces have different sets of features than others. For example, Franklin Gothic Medium has these really fun little ornaments. I, I didn't know that actually before I uh, worked on this. And you'll see that some typefaces like Futura, despite the fact it's an open typeface, has a very basic character set. These are things that are good to know before you choose a typeface for a project. Uh, in closing, before we go on to the next video where we'll learn how to create the table of contents, uh, I'd like to just give a little pitch for using high quality typefaces. Uh, I know that many people when they start out get free fonts and possibly even pirated fonts and they just kind of use whatever comes with their computer, but I believe that the more that you start working with typography and the graphic design, that you'll more be drawn to professional fonts and you'll realize that this is something that is worth uh, spending money on and taking time for. If you have Typekit, if you have the new version of Adobe Creative Cloud, you will also have the ability to add fonts from their online Typekit feature. And this is a very good place to look for fonts because they're all open type fonts. They will all, they're all licensed to be embedded in EPUBs. And there are many, many advantages to using these. And I recommend that you look at the Adobe website and read what, uh, what Typekit and what OpenType fonts have to offer.